Well, on the 51st day of class, we are starting class where we start a lot of classes on the class page. And we're going to click on Unit 2 and scroll down to the 51st day of class. And the 51st day of class, uh, we're going to go a little deeper into the Black Death, the bubonic plague. And we're going to do so using graphs and some academic reading. And not the easiest thing in the world to do and not the most exciting, but there is a lot of value to improving your reading. And we sat down in a group, and one person was in charge of this reading called the Little Ice Age. The other was in charge of Ibn Khaldun's An Altered World. The third person got Ibn Battuta's Catastrophe of the 14th Century. The fifth person got Stefani's Florentine Chronicle. And the last person got the challenging one, Boccaccio's Decameron. And there was a graphic organizer, nothing that unusual, and you broke down your respective reading but I was hoping that you were able to get a good generalization about the bubonic plague from these readings. So for those who struggled with the reading, I took the liberty of showing you a couple pictures of the bubonic plague. And reminders from the first two days. In a six-year span, the Black Death was the worst catastrophe in recorded history to that point. Uh, called the Great Mortality, just emphasized the death rate. And it was caused by the, you know, fleas, uh, getting infected blood of a rat, jumping on a person. And it, as human interactions increased, more people got the plague. It destroyed a higher pr proportion of the population than any other single known event up to that point. Uh, one observer noted the living were scarcely sufficient to bury the dead. No one could be sure what caused it. So reading number one was the Little Ice Age. And Little Ice Age might have been the simplest of the five because it's very concrete. In 1300, there were 79 million people living in Europe. And you can see here the temperatures dropped. So if you were already in a very cold climate or in a higher elevation, it was virtually impossible to grow food and it caused starvation on a scale uh, that Europe had not seen. And there's theories saying those who did survive were so weakened, their nutrition was so poor, when the plague swept through Europe, they were in a weakened state, and that's what caused a third of the population to, um, to die during that time. So you can see, fairly simple, the Ice Age uh, changed Europe uh, climate-wise, uh, lessened immune systems. Now the second reading was called an altered world. Uh, Ibn Khaldun, one of the most traveled men of the Middle Ages. Him and Ibn Battuta from the Middle East are two men that really traveled the world. And you can see Khaldun's travels as far as we know uh, all throughout the Mediterranean, in, in southern Spain, in northern Africa, into Egypt, into the Middle East, and what's modern day Saudi Arabia. And as he traveled, he wrote, thank goodness, and we have his writings. And he, from the text that he wrote, it reads, in referring to the plague, it swallowed up many of the good things of civilization and wiped them out. It overtook the dynasties at the time of their senility. When they had reached the limit of their duration, it lessened their power, curtailed their influence, it weakened their authority. Their situation approached the point of annihilation and disillusion. Civilization decreased with the decrease of mankind. Cities and buildings were laid waste. Roads and way signs were obliterated. Settlements and mansions became empty, dynasties and tribes grew weak, the entire inhabited world changed. And even if you didn't get all those words, I think you get the flavor, you get the feel. Annihilation, um, obliteration, this is a really horrible thing. He witnessed it with his own eyes. Now, the third reading came from Ibn Battuta, even more well-traveled. Him and Marco Polo are probably the two most traveled men during this history. And I know we haven't learned about Marco Polo yet that we will. And Ibn Battuta's travels are even more extensive into Asia, into Africa, into the Indian subcontinent, into Eastern Europe. A remarkably traveled man, and thank goodness he wrote uh, his, you know, uh, journals and, and, and diaries and all that good stuff. And we still have it. So from that third reading, Catastrophe of the 14th Century, I took a quote. In the calamitous year of 1348, ships of death coursed westward throughout the Mediterranean basin, inflicting their grim lading on one port after another. From the ports, mule trains and camel caravans trans transmitted the disease to the interior regions of Europe, northern Africa, and the Middle East. By the end of 1350, 
when the first assault of the disease was playing itself out, Europe may have lost as much as one-third of its population. Mortality rates in Islamic lands were probably comparable. So again, showing the catastrophe, the disaster uh, that the plague caused. And the fourth reading was from the Florentine uh, Chronicles. And in this, uh, Stefani describes the mortality rates in terms of just the sheer numbers. Even the animals were dying. I mean, just death everywhere you look. Doctors could do nothing. First of all, they didn't have any, sci or limited at least, scientific knowledge, and there was so much death, it was beyond anything they could do. Family life broke down. Uh, husbands would leave wives. Mothers would leave children. Brothers and sisters just running for their lives. This whole a structure of family, which is the binding agent in a lot of civilizations, almost all civilizations, was breaking down. It described the symptoms and the outcomes about the the festering buboes and the and the and the dying and the stenches. Very very graphic. Um, how economic life broke down. You know the economic structure. Key people's key jobs. They died. You don't have that person. And people abandoned one another. And descriptions of vultures eating the dead and, and smells, it, it really captures the essence. I think this one is the most um, you know, poetic among the five readings. And the fifth reading was Decameron by Boccaccio. And Boccaccio really was very accurate. It showed the brutality of the time, insights, and human character. And I just took three excerpts. Uh, of the black death, how many valiant men, how many fair ladies breakfast with their kinfolk and the same night supped with their ancestors in the next world? Now that means you wake up in the morning, you're fine, and you've checked out by that night. That's how rapidly the bubonic plague spread. A second quote, a little different than the first one, to have compassion for those who suffer is a human quality which everyone should possess, especially those who have required comfort themselves in the past and have managed to find it in others. But that broke down during the bubonic plague. This fundamental, um, simple human compassion, compassion broke down because of circumstances. And the quote that I think sums it up, because I asked you a drill to generalize these five readings, I would choose this. If I was on your side of the desk, I'd choose this. And the quote, the condition of the people was pitiable to behold. They sickened by the thousands daily and died unattended and without help. Many died in the open street, others dying in their houses, made it known by the stench of their rotting bodies. Consecrated churchyards did not suffice for the burial of the vast multitude of bodies, which were heaped by the hundreds in vast trenches, like goods and ships hold and covered with a little earth. You couldn't even keep up with the dead. So these five uh, readings really show the bubonic plague pretty well. So let's go back and generalize our five readings back to where we were, the generalization. You can generalize the bubonic plague moved so quickly it, people didn't even know how to process it. It just killed on a scale that is unmanageable. It broke down fundamental structures in society, family structures, economic structures, religious structures, just broke down. The gruesomeness of the death, the horrible, nasty way that you died is a generalization you can get from all four. Now, the second part of the drill I'm not going to get into because I think it's fairly simple, where I'm going to ask you to create a graph here to show the um, bubonic plague in a, in a, using mathematics instead. So at first glance, you can look at time here on this y-axis is time and population. So let's think about where the bubonic plague was, 1347. So we're going to look at these two in particular. Europe, yeah, that's 18 million less. China, that's 13 million less. Southwest Asia, that's 2 million less. So here's the question. Why was Southwest Asia less hit than these other areas? And the North Africa remained the same. So just looking at numbers, these are some intriguing questions. Why did Europe get hit uh, harder than anybody else? Why did China and Europe? Does this have something to do with the Silk Road? How come these people didn't get hit so bad? And hopefully you can see these things when you make this graph, okay? So that's the assignment for today, and we are going to move on from the bubonic plague and move on to 
some other aspects of the Middle Ages, the Crusades and the Inquisition and the Magna Carta and the Holy Roman Empire and all that good stuff. But hopefully you got a grasp of the bubonic plague and how devastating an event it was during this time.